What is good, y'all? It's Chanel, also known as Tuber Fresh, coming at you today with another album review. I'm so excited to bring you guys this today. Um, it's a couple artists that I'm friends with and that I enjoy, and I think is doing really cool stuff. I mean, I think once you hear this album, and if you already have listened to it, you'll know that it's something that's really unique in our brass world. It's danceable, it's fun, it's high energy, they're doing interesting things, and I think it's a um, really cool discussion that we had. Um, I want y'all to hear it for yourself, and I really want this to be somewhat of a, you know, kind of tribute to younger musicians that are brass musicians, whatever type of musicians that are up and coming and trying to explore beyond, you know, their classroom or their their private lessons or, you know, and beyond the classical canon. And if you are that person and you're looking for that and you're trying to dig deeper, this is for you, this record is for you, and you should definitely check out these artists on an individual level as well. Okay, let me get started. As always, I'm gonna pick up my cell phone and read from it as I just kind of read a little bit about Reginald Chapman and Darius Christian and their album, their EP called Wake and Tape. So here we go, here's a little bit on Reginald Chapman. Dr. Reginald Chapman Jr., put some respect on his name, resides in New York City as a low brass multi-instrumentalist, composer, and educator. He received his BA in classical bass trombone from Virginia Commonwealth University and his MM and DMA in jazz bass trombone from the University of Illinois under the tutelage of Jim Pugh. Um, Reginald enjoys interfacing with a variety of situations and genres. His career includes a long list of studio credits, um, extensive touring with bands like Lucky Chops and No BS Brass, and indie rock groups like Foxygen, as well as on Broadway with Frozen, and classical and jazz performances with Ho Holenbeck and Argue. Um, when not touring, Reginald teaches and schedules his own performances. In 2018, he released his debut album, Prototype, um, praised by Downbeat and Spotify State of Jazz and featured on Fox's Empire. Reginald is a BAC artist and plays on a custom prototype model bass trombone that he works to develop with Mike Corrigan. Really cool um, uh, that he also has a uh, bass trumpet, a BAC custom bass trumpet as well. And let's go to Darius Christian. Darius, Baltimore raised and Brooklyn reborn. Darius Christian is genre bending force of nature with fresh, brassy, agile trombone stylizations, rich vocals, um, spoken word, um, and a ton of energy. You've heard him with Macklemore, Miley Cyrus, Jonas Brothers, Solange, Adele, Rihanna, um, Bastille, Ricky Martin, Macy Gray, and Andy Grammer. Um, you've watched him on America's Got Talent. Um, the Tonight Show, The Good Morning America, and Saturday Night Live. Um, you've heard his scores on Vice. Um, you may have seen him in campaigns for Nike, Adidas, Tom Hilfiger, um, and a ton. He's also a model um, as well. Um, and he just he does composition, film, modeling, media. Um, he's just an all-around Renaissance guy. Um, so they collaborated on this EP during the pandemic. And they talk a bit about that um, in this interview that we have here. It's really cool, really fun, upbeat, energetic um, dance music, sometimes based on hip hop, based on like kind of Dilla-esque beats, um, drum and bass even, and um, like maybe even some, I think a bit of techno um, and house music. So it's really dope. Let me just read a little bit about the EP. Inspired by 90s cassette tapes, listening sessions, New York City-based brass instrumentalist Reginald Chapman and Darius Christian turned their deep pandemic video hangouts into immersive remote writing and producing sessions. So I just want to give you a little bit, of, a little taste on that. Really, you got to dig in yourself and listen because it goes by like this. It's only 22 minutes, but it's super fun and energetic. And I mean, listen to Darius's voice on one of my favorite songs. I think it was the first single that they released um, called Wide Eyes. It's beautiful and just the mixture of these two minds together was really beautiful. And I wanna introduce you guys to Reginald Chapman and Darius Christian. Collectively, they did, they did it under Pressure Fit and I wanna introduce you guys to their album. 
and their EP called Wake and Tape. Here we go. All right, so what up, Reginald? What up, Darius? I'm so excited to see you guys this morning. Wake and Tape, that's what we're doing right now. Uh, <laughs> that's the name of you guys' recent album. And it's really cool, I love it. Uh, when I first listened to it, it was just all like upbeat, uplifting music. Um, I love you guys' vocals on it. Um, I love the sense of connection through it, like through the pandemic. And I just, I just love that it was something that was inspiring and uplifting. And I just, and I love that, you know, two of the black trombone players that I know got together and did something cool. So um, just walk me through like the process. How did this even happen? I know that you guys created this during the pandemic, but were you, like, how did it work out? Were you sending files back and forth? Did you meet up in person at some point and do this? Um, how did all these ideas, I think really cohesive ideas work out together when you're kind of, you know, far apart? how did it happen? No, <laughs> I guess it's my, my go. Um, yeah, I think it, it started, um, I think it just like you and I, Chanel, it started with this like sort of like far off amicable relationship via the internet. And, um, you know, just like little small things here. No, oh, yeah, what's up? Blah, 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 blah. And I think I remember before I had even met Darius, Darius uh, sent me a, a gig for something or other in New York. And I was in Urbana Champaign at the time. And I, I legit was about to like buy a, a flight <laughs> to New York just to get, just to take this gig that I would have lost money on, but it was cool. Um, but yeah, I, I think moving forward, our first like time just hanging out together was, was at like his, I think his, uh, his partner's cousin's show or something like that at, at um, pianos. And we like, you know, we, I think that's the first time we like really shared space. And I just remember taking like an Uber back. I might be getting lots of things mixed up, but taking an Uber back to Brooklyn and, um, and like just sharing music, like, yo, check this out. This is something I, I made and like, and then vice versa. And we were just like, real, like, yo, this is, um, I don't know, I, this is, you should press this up and put it out, blah, blah. you know? And then, um, I think that like a year later, we've, you know, somehow we've, Darius came over my spot here and we, we dropped two two of those songs were done. Like each song was pretty much done in one session. It was the craziest like synergy of, of like, oh, you do this, you try this, you do this, you do this, you do this, bam, 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 bam. And then we just had, I think Essequence was a pre-pandemic like conception. And then uh, another one, uh, Clark was a pre-pandemic conception. And then we, um, after, after that, like it was, you know, the pandemic hit and we were like, yo, let's, let's work some stuff out. And so we just, it was, it was sort of a, uh, it was a, a producing session us trying to figure out how can we, uh, how can we do this? Um, and then, you know, both wrangling with our own technologies, like a more outboard gear guy. So I'm trying to figure out how that interfaces with like the DAW and uh, Zoom so that I can get the ideas to um, to Darius and he's he's doing his thing and he'll, he'll tell you all about that. And um, But it was also just like kind of like a bro hang too, you know, we, we were just like, I had these old tapes um, actually, here's one right here. I have the cassette. I've been um, bouncing some some cassettes. This is a uh, Missy Elliott uh, Super Duper Fly, like original pressing. My um, my uh, my uncle sent me like his whole tape collection. He's from uh, Virginia, and he he owned a club in in Virginia Beach where um, Missy Elliott and Timbaland you know, during that era, he says he remembers them coming in and like hanging out and like VIP and stuff. And so he has like just deep cut gems of like OG new Jack swing tracks that you just like never heard before, like all this stuff. So we would just like put it on and just listen and talk. And then we would sit down and just start, start, you know, chopping it up, making it happen. 
That's dope. What about you, Darius? Like, you know, what's your kind of, uh, how did this fit together for you? I know, like, you come from a world where you're a singer, songwriter, producer, and I know Reginald comes from a similar kind of world where, um, you know, you're not only instrumentalists, right? Um, that's a cool thing about you guys getting together is that you have these different approaches, but at the same time, you're kind of doing something outside the box that not a ton of people do, you know, especially horn players. So, like, what was that approach for you coming in, you know, using your DAW and having Reginald, you know, using all these outboard gear? Like, how did that work for you guys? It was uh, a sort of re we wow reawakening for me creatively um, to work with Reggie in this capacity because, like you said, we I mean we truthfully we met at Nam the big brass convention years ago and we were like instantly like yo we're just hanging out right we're not doing the the hustle talk you know <laughs> and we were instantly like yeah you're right bro this is crazy so much noise and we fostered this like set, you know sending files back and forth and when it came time to like, being in the same space i had just finished um pretty time intensive album with uh, another collaborator of mine named gary clayton which is really cool music but it's very like constructed layered stacked like highly like we're kind of fusing like nine inch nails with tom york and like layers and for reggie and i to get together there was this feeling of like oh so you mean i just say this one idea then you just regurgitate all of the ideas within like one to two takes okay yeah that's the take and it was just this like the flow really happened that I definitely would not be able to do by myself. Like, you know, all of us have our own things. And I feel as though when you're producing, you can sit there and look at one take or one A bar loop for like 24 hours, you know, and not get anywhere. But when you have someone who's like world class, bona fide, bad ASS, it helps. You know, because then you're like, oh, well, no, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> just you have to keep going. So for me, it was great because we we started just shaping these little scenes and little films and little vignettes and little like characters. And it all started from listening to some really cool cassette tapes that we would then like trace ideas over. Um, like a Stanley Clark record, for example, we put on, you we were like, baby, baby. And we caught like a little a little loop. You're like, uh, oh. so to me, like produced that, reproduced that loop. And then ultimately didn't use it and went with this whole other thing that came out of that. So this, this project was like new ideas and new ways of working came out of this and working with Reggie. Uh, I was like, oh, wow. So we can then use all of our training and like, ear drink like harmony or study and apply it to like what would normally be considered like i don't know your sort of dilla-esque beat tape which then became more of like this through composed song cycle or something you know yeah, so yeah. dope i mean like yeah well, go ahead go ahead Darius. no it's it's estimate to like if any musicians regardless of their brass experience or singer songwriter or say they went to music school, which I think can be even more dangerous if you're trying to be a creative. It's like, you know, if you have an idea or a nugget of an idea of like, Hey, I want to do my John Mayer set or I want to do a set where I'm singing, but you're playing, you know, you play saxophone or something like find a way to use your instruments to like be the guitar, like, it's possible and when you have someone that you trust that you can work with that you respect whew, that's the sauce yeah man i mean i want to talk about some songs on the album now because i think cool i was like i love I, I was wondering who wrote all the like liner notes for each song <laughs> <laughs> because it was really fun and cool and just like I don't know, like, I can tell, like, you guys had, like, fun with that. Um, but yeah. let's, start, let's start with Gurge, because I, what what struck me about it is, like, 
you know, a lot of these songs are like dance songs. It's like this and different kind of dances. You guys do like drum and bass. You guys do some house and stuff like that. But this one I read that was like Balkan influence, like soloing and, you know, things like that. So I was wondering like what kind of horns were you using that uh, Balkan kind of horn you have? Or like talk yeah. to me about, talk yeah. to like the <laughs> horn geeks, you know, right now. And, and your okay. production styles too. Like, I like that. Talk a bit more about that too. So this one started, I, I think to be honest with this one was, oh man, this was two songs. Well, I think we both decided to work on, at the same time, we both decided to work on one song together. And my song, ended up, my version ended up going this totally different direction. And then his version ended up, <laughs> and it was fun though. We were, we, we were all on Zoom and we both had our DAWs open, respective DAWs. We muted it and we we're just like kind of in our zone doing our thing. And I think this is like started with Darius's like, you know, a g- genesis. Um, and in a really amazing fashion, like this back and forth fashion, Darius, he, you know, he's, he's, of course, he's playing bass and guitar, all this stuff, and like just, just killing drum programming. Um, he sent me all the stems and um, had me drop it into my uh, ESX, the Electribe. So I, I basically remixed and re like imagined, um, and which just because it's a step sequencer, uh, sampler it, it kind of forces me to have to like really you know just kind of redu- redux everything down to like a, a distilled vibe or whatever and then we go back and, and do another arrangement uh like like you know and Darius is really good at that um so I did that and then I just one morning I just was having one of those caffeinated mornings called him up you know too early like it just was talking too much crap you know eight like 8 a.m whatever on the way to the practice space and yeah just dropped uh, the the uh, the rotary flugel um it's it's actually a horn uh, josh holcomb gave it to me he he was he's really into the uh the like balkan stuff and all that and everything and he and he bought he was kind of shedding this horn he's he bought a better one and he just gave it to me and uh and i for some reason i can somehow play it i put a tenor tenor horn mouthpiece on it which means that I have to like really tell it what to do. I don't think it's supposed to. Uh, it's it's like a it's from like the twenties or something where, you know, when they were doing those different uh, tuning systems. So I actually have to pull the lead pipe all the way out and I play it in A. <laughs> it's not in B flat. It's in A. So like I I basically have to forget. I have to pretend like that. I I don't actually trans transpose. I just pretend like the songs in the different key. I guess that's transposing. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just did layers, just lay laid down, you know, my fifis for like a good like three hours, mm-hmm. you know, um, recording over and over and over again. And that horn just lends itself because of the setup it, to those types of uh, Balkan embellishments and all of mm-hmm. that, every, and all that stuff. Um, and then you know we take all of that, and I'll just drop all of these stems to Darius, and he like did a nice scrub up of all of this stuff. Like, you know, um, the Electribe adds a lot of really nice, uh, fun, soft uh, uh, saturation and everything. Um, and then we we kind of built out the arrangement from there. Lots of cut, copy, paste. Like, you know, we do these on Zoom sessions. Um, and, uh, and you know, and they'll, it'll go through like three different, it went through like three different iterations for like, oh, no, it needs to be distilled. Actually, I recorded it almost twice the speed i was envisioning it like way too fast <laughs> and so all of that stuff was like slowed down um verisped by like 40 wow. clicks or something crazy um and to to a sweet spot Star- sorry darius i'm giving up all of our uh our, our secrets here <laughs> but uh it was very and it, it sounds great and it created an amazing vibe and and um and i mean that's just like the tenor of the whole album and the, the whole collaboration in general is like it's it's always a yes and which is beautiful you know what i mean there's no we don't we don't really throw speed bumps at each other for the most part and and i think that's that's you know that's that's boss and it makes me excited about working with Darius on, on various items um including something we have coming up uh, recent time uh, soon Dope. I'm excited that you guys are working on more music together. It seems like you guys have a really cool connection and like the vibe is there. And, you know, I think one of the first singles or the first single, maybe I could correct me if I'm wrong, that you put out was Wide Eyes, right? And I just love Darius's voice. It's your voice on this, right? I just love Darius's voice on this. I just love how it feels. There's a texture to it, especially like 
the other layers the underneath kind of like um, voice coming into and like how did this happen because I think it's a really really beautiful song um, and I just want to hear about like how how did you guys work on this like I must have said a thousand things I float at sea, no shore My temper tantrums run away Love is the cure I won't forget it I can't regret it Your love is precious Diamonds and pearls Searching for daylight Wow, I, I love that the music is connected with you and that you're feeling texture. I, I, oh, yeah. This was such a process. Oh, we, we spent so much time trying to give this music vibe and texture, and it's great that that's coming across. Um, truthfully, I think we both had a conversation before the song, and we were like, you know what would be an amazing challenge? is to write a love song. You know, and I also my dad has been calling me for years. He'd be like, "Yeah, man, I see you do all this brass pop, pop, you know, doing all playing on TV boat." But man, when are you gonna write a ballad like Luther Vandross? When are you gonna give us a Luther Vandross ballad? And I'm like, bro, <laughs> it's like the hardest thing to do. And realistically, like I love my partner. We've we it's been. A, a, a beautiful relationship that's had its up and ups and downs. And he said this in, in a period of like one of those stupid, like, you know, partnership, you're still figuring your, your relationship out kind of like conflict. I'm going to write a ballad about love. <laughs> We're in the middle of a pandemic. We're like at each other's throats. We're stuck in a one bedroom in Brooklyn. And of course it just was an experiment. I'm like, okay, what do I love about my partner? What does Reggie love about his partner? And it kind of went down to like eyes, eye contact, connection, and what that means. And then what the visual, like what is happening when you go deeper into someone's eyes. Like, and then all these, we just had a day where Reggie and I like pulled straight up, pulled up a Google doc. And I was like, okay, we're going to talk about what this movie is. What is the scene of this movie? And we put down words. We just word vomited. We were like, doc, ocean, moonlight, stars, tide, water. Uh, uh, just a whole thread where we just like, we kept sculpting and sculpting. And this, this song took a long time for us. Uh, this, was, this was like the most intensive process for us because I think it were, you know, we were had to tap into some emotion. And then for me, vocal days are, are pretty intense because I have to basically get emotionally and spiritually naked and like perform this song and connect to it. And yeah, this was like, a, I'd say the biggest challenge off of the album. Um, Cause when you connect emotion with music, that's when you start to make, that's what's separating it from. Like, I think that's why people love Frank Ocean and Solange like don't touch my hair like that statement and i mean there's so much to that so you know what can we do as artists to yes make the most killing music and yes play play the the, the lacquer off of our instruments but what can we do to like you know i'm curious to know what what we all think you know chanel like what what do you think separates the music player from the artist or the artist from the well you know i was gonna ask you because you mentioned like a sense of vulnerability you know when you're singing and i feel like the voice you know um just like you said looking into like your partner's eyes and this connection like is the human voice like I mean, I feel really connected to the tuba and singing through it, but is the human voice like for you, 
just a different outlet, a different feeling emotionally for you than it is like coming out the trombone. Like, like, like what is that? Like, you know, I think that so many trombone players, brass players, whoever, I think they're a bit scared of using their voice. I think they're a bit scared of like, well, what does my voice sound like? Is it good or is it not good? And what's a good voice and what's not? And I'm just curious to, to hear like, is that like a more vulnerable kind of place for you? You know, um, like how does it differ from like putting the horn on the face and expressing yourself and just coming out vocally? Well, I, I feel like foremost brass players kind of have a vocal cheat code because in order to play the brass instrument, you need to be able to sing the part. Like, I just think of Joe Alessi, like consummate Joe Alessi saying, like, if you sing it, you can play it, but make sure you can sing it. You know, there's some great master and classes where he's Arnold Jacobs, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. The song is, what is it? The brass song? Song and wind. Song and wind. Song and wind, yeah. right? So for me, I, th I think about Reggie in, in this album, like Reggie was doing some, some like vocali vocalization in one of our sessions, I was like, what are you doing? What is that? He was like, man, I'm just, and I'm like, no. <laughs> I, was, I was like, angry. I was like, record that. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, yeah, more more TMI. Like, I, um, I'm giving up all my secrets. I, uh, I've gotten into the habit, especially over COVID, like slowing down, trying. I, I didn't, you know, I wasn't as muscle bound on the instruments as I had been. And so I would just do these things where like I would do a take and like, I, what, what am I hearing? And I'm gonna play it. And the, but that means it's just chill and palatable. I, you know, I'm gonna double it up and that's just what it is. And, and a lot of first takes too, like maybe there's a little bit of spittle in there or whatever, like, you know, really like honoring that. Um, but I also started, uh, I would, I've been just singing whole takes and then I would go in and I would break it up into two bar phrases and then I would I would play it, play it, trace it with the horn and then delete the um, delete the vocals. And so some of that was actually me just like like I was singing the thing, because, again, if I could sing it and connect with it here, um, sometimes it actually it would be harder to play here, something that I wouldn't idiomatically play here. But on the other side, like I'm just thinking if it's coming from here and coming from here. Um, then, then the the audience and the other people listening, it, it would hit those centers as well. You know, even though it's going through a different medium, um, and so that that was kind of a, a really great hack cheat code, um, especially like an, an oblique strategy of sorts. And I, I still do it. Like someone sends me a hip hop beat, and I'll just <laughs> I'll just just sing over it, like just chilling in my apartment, just sing over it, and then that would be it. That would be the take, and it would be like the funkiest you know, 90s, like, you know, 90s R&B baby uh, version of myself. And, and you know, it, it would, it would train, it's been transcending the horn, you know, in a really beautiful way. Yeah, yeah, I feel that, like, I do a lot of that too, you know. I just feel like naturally, it's just where I, where I want to be is going to come out naturally for my voice, rather, for me, than my horn. And then I do exactly what you said, I delete the voice most of the time, but, it's funny when people ask me to collaborate, I will put my voice on it and then they're like, oh shit, can we keep that? You know, so I'm like, okay, you know, but it's always like, I'm always like, let me replace it. But I think sometimes listening to yourself or listening to other people and be like, nah, like what, what Darius is saying to Reggie, let's keep that shit. It's just like, it's, I think that was on, I think I heard your voice on Gurge. I think it was, I'm not sure, Reggie, but it just, it, there's this overpowering, like, you know, guttural connection to the voice especially like when done with conviction it's like it's a different feel it's a different connection so i love that you guys inspire each other to kind of come out of your zones you know and to do something like so one of the songs here i think it was power i could be wrong was kind of done like heavy brass it's cinematic like is that the one yeah okay so like i want to hear i want to hear your thoughts on that because i love that tune it just the brass player in me was just like, yeah, <laughs> you know? So, so like explain like, how did you, you talked about like setting up a Google doc and like, and putting ideas out. How did that, how did the ideas for this one come about? <laughs> Darius. Oh man. It's, or you want me to tell it? Well, it started out, I was like, I was checking out a uh, Tina Marie song and I started like, basically 
tracing it, producing it. Like I recorded the parts of one of her tracks that was super like, bam, right? And then deleted all that, but maybe kept some, like some of the the base content, like base ideas that I've recorded. Doom, boom, doom, 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 boom, boom, boom. But it's so like the way that we work, I just, this was one of these moments bro. Reggie, you got to help me out here. Like it was serious my, postal service. My, my, my version, my version is more salacious than that. <laughs> Yo, so I was on this kick where I was, I was trying to just like rattle beats off and I was like, don't do this people at home but I was cattle calling my friends to like to collaborate with me on stuff and so I would like make the beat and then I and I and I was trying to put it up that day and so I sent like five people and whoever got back to me first like and who was available to put the um the thing on there they um you know I'd be like oh here it is all right and then literally later that day I would edit it I'm still a iMovie guy <laughs> so I would edit it in iMovie and put as many cheesy effects on it and I got some cool stuff that way it was dope you know it's just like I mean come on pandemic we're just in the hole like yo how can I how can I make how can I look at this screen a little bit different oh oh this is a new perspective I might as well have gone to a different country um and so I sent it and Darius just like lit like immediately he's just like no, no, I, I got someone else to do it. And like 20 minutes later, and then like 25 minutes later, he's like, did you just cattle call me, bro? <laughs> I was like, man, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, man. No, you're special, man. You're special. <laughs> and so he was just like, well, how about this? Let me cattle call you. And which it wasn't really a cattle call. He just like wanted me to get on the track. Um, and so I just, I was like, I felt in my, in my penance, was uh was like like knocking out this track as quick as possible. So I just you know, I've been doing a full court press of like, you know, low to high, like you know, I sometimes I have this tuba, bass trombone, you know, uh bass trumpets, tenor bone, like, you know, flugel or whatever. And so that's what I did. I just like did the thing, like looped up a few sections, all the big sections. And from what I remember it was like maybe a longer piece. And then, you know, Darius is like a consummate arranger as far as like, uh, all, you know, just taking the electronic goop and then being able to make it into something very cohesive and uh, like that has a narrative. Like that's another thing that I learned from from Darius is like I'm, I'm very sort of a vertical thinker when it comes to the approach, especially in the, in the DA, like I'm more like horizontal on, on the, you know, on the, the manuscript paper. Um, but uh, but yeah, you know, he he took that up and just arranged it into this really cool thing, and and added added the like the cool sample with the <laughs> like on some Jay Dilla vibes, added the sample to it, and and I don't know, I I was like, yeah, we I didn't know this, but we did all that. Like most of the time with a lot of this stuff, I'll send him things and I'll get it back and be like, that's. I had no idea it sounded that good. You know, I'm using my 58 over here going through my uh, my audience. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, he's over here just working this crazy magic with the DAW and everything. Yeah. So, like, I know we're running out of time, but, like, I want to hear, like, what's next for you guys as collaborators and also what's next individually. Like, I just want to hear what's going on for y'all. Um, just, yeah, talk a little bit about that. What up, Darius? So, like, maybe you can talk to us first about, well, you know, don't give away any secrets, but I'd love to hear what you guys are working on collaboratively. Ooh, yeah, we we just did a, a really fun DJ set together, which was just so much fun. Just brass electronics side by side. So looking forward to doing more of those in the future in Brooklyn, um, ideally. And we're working on a really special cover that is part of a larger project that we were asked to take part in, um, which I, I don't think I'm able to speak on yet, but it, I will say it's, if all things go to plan, it will, will be in some really profound company of people on this compilation. So um, it's mixing stage. Like we, we had a full day in the studio and again, just rapid fire, kind of our first times back together in the same space in like a year and a half. So that's going to be really special to share that. And um, it might be it might be a little bit of time for that. But we have some other things in the works that we're working on, a couple other covers that I think will be super fun. Dope. Awesome. 
So what about you guys uh, individually? What do you guys coming up? Reginald, what do you got coming up? Yo, um, so I do want to say that, yeah, we, we got a whole folder of, you know, we've been calling it EP2, but, you know, I, I especially as we're now, we're, we're kind of circling the drain on getting in a room together. Like, you know, we, it's cool. I, I, I haven't had that focus with, with someone where I can just like, just be in the space and and there's there's not a whole lot of words happening it's just like a, a like a, this mutual trust where you can kind of fall into like okay this is what you know when someone respects what naturally like comes into existence like almost immediately without question it it kind of puts you in a space of of you know like let's it's it's very cool and fun so i think that ep2 is going to be real real dope um, personally, um, another uh, pressure fit uh, extra, uh, collaboration exploration with a trombonist David Ben Porat from Sidewalk Chalk out in Chicago. Um, he's, he's he also played in uh, check this out uh, jazz and was it Jazzanova? Yeah, like the the um, OG like they 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 took all the. Um, blue note records and like put them together in like a hip hop flavor back in like the late nineties or whatever. Um, but yeah, so it's just, it's, it's another uh, house exploration, um, featuring, uh, this artist, Chell Ray, which you guys are, uh, gonna, it's going to be a fun, uh, putting this, this new artist out. Um, and yeah, you know, just, just doing the stuff, li- living the life over here. <laughs> dope, dope, dope. So thank you guys so much. I mean, I love the album. It's great. And I'm so excited that this kind of content and this kind of music is being put out by people in our community. Um, It's super dope. And I don't know if there's anything quite like it, you know, in terms of like brass world. So I just I'm so happy that it's out there for the people. And I want to thank you guys for your time. And yeah, I'm excited to see what you guys do next. Really excited. Thank you for having us and sharing creative space. Chanel, you're such an inspiration to me and I appreciate you. You guys are an inspiration. Thank you. Yeah, you guys are an inspiration. And I just like, I don't know, I just love that you guys talked about your process because a lot of younger folks are excited about that. You know, they might not know it yet and they might not know how to do it yet, but seeing you guys put it together and it, they know that it's possible for horn players. And I think that's kind of like what we want to always, you know, think about is that it's going to be easier for the next generation because somebody did it before. Now they have a blueprint in a sense, you know? Yeah. So that's dope. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think the biggest thing is, um, you know, <clears throat> I mean, it, it's important to respect where, you know, where we come from, the, the instruments too, you know, they, they are of, you know, I guess this could be argued in a certain sense, but they are, they are of Europe and of a, a tradition and lineage. Um, and, you know, so Arbins and Bordonis and, uh, you know, all the, the stuff that we've learned, the, the uh, you know, Fred Fennell wind ensemble concept and, mm-hmm. and orchestras and, and even, you know, Duke and, and Basie and all of that stuff is like really important to, to know. But like, you know, that those are those are points where we, we go back to and those are um, also like springboards and starting points but all of the stuff you listen to with the friends Justin Bieber house music whatever all of that stuff is just as important and legitimate to to our or your makeup you know as the um, as the artist in person and so I, I think it's it's some so many young people don't know it's okay and just as important to be to include that into yeah. into their like musical diet on the instrument as a brass player. Like don't just because it hasn't been written down in a book somewhere or because your teacher hasn't given it to you mm-hmm. doesn't mean that you can't explore and embody those things. And and it's not it shouldn't be a novelty to be honest. It should be is just as as easy as you you know opening up yeah. bluebells of scotland or whatever you know so yeah. you you kind of i think that's just it's a paradigm shift and it i think it's important and it's for, happening yeah, yeah yeah it's a shift yeah. and it's happening and that's what is is so cool about just a project like this is that we see that there's that training um, that you guys have and that we've all had but there's this you know awakening or sense of like i want to connect with me with you know the person the artist you know um where i come from you know what i love you know and um so much of that has to do with living in the 21st century you know and being 
being a musician in in this era and I think that you guys do that really well and um, you know I, I think that you got to do it more and I'm excited you know I'm really excited to hear what you guys especially the secret project I'm like hmm, what is it? I'm like guessing I'm like trying to you know so keep me uh. updated and, and let's do something else when you guys when that comes out all right Yay, okay, sounds great. good. Thanks all a right, bunch, Chanel. Thanks so much, all right. and it's great yeah. to see you all. Bye. See you, Darius. Thank you. <laughs> see you all. Bye. Bye. Have a great one. Bye. Thank you all so much for checking out the interview. Please like, subscribe, and comment on the video. It really helps out the channel. And of course, if you are doing a record or know of anyone that I should check out in the brass world, any type of brass, not just low brass, please let me know, send me a holler, send me a DM, whatever, a DM, whatever it is. I'll be happy to check it out. Until next time, peace. <laughs>